All right, if you have a Bible, turn to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Amen? Blessed assurance. Just one verse in Ephesians chapter 1. It's a great book of the Bible. But we'll look at verse 3. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Boy, there's a lot in that verse. It's talking about blessings and being blessed. And since our God is blessed, he blesses us, amen? But there are spiritual blessings, and there's certainly a lot of physical blessings, but we're going to look at the spiritual side of this today. Let's bow and ask God to help us. Father, we love you, and we're so grateful. You're so good to us. The verses are endless. The experiences are endless. Be with us today. Lord, fulfill your word. May your promises be seen today and be fulfilled. Minister to every heart here, Lord. Help us as we preach and teach, and help us as we receive the word. In Jesus' name, amen. It's a great, great verse, and I want to talk about how to be spiritually blessed, and we certainly are. Um, Paul the Apostle said that he buffeted his body lest he should not be what he was preaching. He said, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become a castaway. Sometimes, whether it's preaching or hearing the word, we know that, and we know it's right, and we want it to work for other people, but we want it to work for us too. I am certainly blessed, and I count my blessings all the time. Um, Paul and I were walking through the building this morning, and there are different things in the building or outside the building that remind us of people that made a sacrifice for us, you know? And so we thank God for that. And the gratitude is a part of being a blessing. But the riches of his grace, we talk about that, the blessings of his mercy, of his, of his forgiveness. And I want to make a difference today, and I want to make a difference in my life because when I preach to you, I preach to myself but I want to make a difference in your life. And I think if we just heed the scriptures, that will take place. In John chapter 3 and verse 12, Jesus said this, If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how then shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? There's two differences there. Earthly things, heavenly things. Remember when Jesus told parables, it was an earthly story about a spiritual truth. And some people never got the earthly story or made application. But we can go to the scriptures and find all of those truths and apply that to our life and be blessed spiritually. Uh, 1 Corinthians 2.9, Paul said, As it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither hath entered into the heart of men the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But the Spirit reveals them to us. So we ask the Spirit to come, amen, and we ask the Spirit to work in our lives and our hearts because the, the Word of God is alive. It's quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. It speaks to us. And our spirit speaks to his spirit, and his spirit speaks to our spirit. 2 Corinthians 4.18. While we look not at the things which are seen, and but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. There, then again, there's the, the understanding of these are earthly things and these are spiritual things. Our verse is... He has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Some Christians go through life and they're always worried about the earthly blessing. And we get a lot of earthly blessings, amen? But this is a veil of tears. It's a, it's a difficult life sometimes. But the spiritual blessings outweigh all of that. Things which are not seen are eternal. Salvation is certainly a spiritual blessing. You can't see it, but you see the results of it. Remember in John chapter 3, Jesus said, you must be born again. And then the very next verse, it says, the wind bloweth where it listeth, wherever it wants to go. You can't see where it's coming from and you can't see where it's going. That's the same thing with the Spirit of God. You don't see it, but you experience it. Amen? I don't see salvation. I know my salvation is in Jesus Christ, but I experience the results of my salvation because I'm a new creature. Amen? So it's not a form. It's not an act. It's not just obeying the law. It's what God does inside of us. He's working both the will and the do of his good pleasure all the time inside of us. 
whom having not seen, ye love, or I love him because he loved me first. And all of the verses about loving God, we'll see that in a minute too. God's mercy, God's grace, we don't see those, we experience those. God is working in our heart. He's merciful, is he not? When you wake up and you pray, or you pray at night before you go to bed, or even during the night or during the day, and you just enjoy that fellowship with God and that mercy and that grace, because he always wants to hear us. We can't see the grace, but we can experience it. Um, blessing means any means of happiness, a gift, benefit, or advantage. And so there's we, we took some blessings today. Some of them were physical. Some of them were spiritual. We can thank God we had food to eat today. Amen? Or that our car made it here. Some people are really happy about that. Amen? That's a pretty big blessing. Or you have enough money to pay the bills, or whatever it is, and God giving you good health, or God's ministered to your family. All of these things are earthly blessings, and we can see them happening. But there's a personal relationship with the Lord. And we'll see that as we get into the scripture because it's impossible for God to lie, and he so wants this true in our life. He wants to bless us so that we can be a blessing. That's why he blesses us. And it's so important to do that because the more you're a blessing, the more you're blessed. And if you're merciful, God is merciful to you. Amen. If you want to comfort somebody, God will comfort you in all your tribulation. So Mark chapter 3, or 8, verse 36. What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? So salvation is pretty important. Remember David in Psalm 73. He was envious of the foolish. And he was, it was really breaking his heart. And he said, well, I'm doing this. I'm living this Christian life in vain. But towards the end of the chapter, he says, I was foolish because I have heaven. They don't. And so God has been so good to me. And it all came down to salvation. Amen. I don't know if you ever look at other people and you, man, I wish I had that. I wish I was like that. You know, boy, it'd be nice to have a brand new freight liner or <laughs> Toyota. <laughs> no. Okay, we'll work on that. But I mean, there's things that we look at and we're told not to covet and to be satisfied and content with what God gives us. Amen? Because God gives us so much. Um, we talk about the joy of the Lord. Notice these words. The grace of God. The gift of God, which is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Every good and perfect gift cometh from above. And these gifts are precious to us. They come from the Lord because he wants to please his children. He wants to make us joyful and happy. Remember the story in Genesis about Jacob. And Jacob had been such a deceiver. That's what his name meant. And uh, he, he lied and he, he manipulated and he got what he wanted. But there was a time when he was wrestling with God. You probably remember the story. And he's wrestling with the Lord. And God said, let me go for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. Jacob said, I will not let thee go unless thou bless me. He wanted the blessing that bad. Amen. He struggled. He fought for it. And there's a blessing that God wants to give us. Wouldn't joy be a blessing? Wouldn't peace be a blessing? Wouldn't contentment be a blessing? And those are things you don't see. You just see the results of contentment or discontentment, joy or sorrow. But for God to really work comfort, boy, it's a wonderful thing, grace of God, the riches of his grace. To know those things in a spiritual way can help not only you, but can help all those around you. I want to look today at spiritual blessings, spiritual life, spiritual joy, spiritual peace. John 3, verse 6, that which is born of the spirit, the flesh is flesh, that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Again, there's a line of demarcation. There's this, and there's this. There's a physical blessing, and the flesh working one way, and there's a spiritual blessing, and Almighty God working in the other direction. Romans chapter 5 and verse 5. The love of God, see if you experience this. The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given to us. As many as received him, to them gave he power, to become the sons of God. And so we're children of God, and the Holy Spirit is at work in our hearts and in our lives. Amen? 
We know that as a truth because it's in the Bible. We know that, well, that's what the teacher is teaching. That's what the preacher is preaching. That's what some counselor is giving me. All of those things are true. But to have that manifest in your life, that's the blessing of God on your life. Amen? Peace is a wonderful thing. We'll see that too in a minute. Um, he that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit, he is none of his. So we're spiritual creatures. We've been born again. We're partakers of the new nature. Amen? Peter tells us that. And so something has happened since we got saved. Now, that's the Spirit of God working in you, but the flesh can quench the Spirit. It can grieve the Spirit. Amen? And that's because we depart from the faith or we... Uh, are disobedient to the word, but when we follow the Lord, boy, it's a wonderful path, and it's the work of the Holy Spirit. Romans chapter 8, verse 9, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. Um, 1 Peter 2, 2, as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. Do we have that? I know I'm supposed to read the Bible. I'm supposed to preach on Sunday morning. I'm supposed to teach Sunday school, get a topic, see what God shows me in response to your prayers. God wants me to do this. And I'll bring a message, but God wants that message in my heart too. Amen? And as we read in our devotions, I don't know if you've ever been hurried in your devotions. You say, what's devotions? Well, that's the time where you take the Bible and you read it. Amen? And you talk to God and he talks to you. And when it becomes real, it's a real conversation. It's a real experience. It's a spiritual experience. Boy, God, that was good. I've read this so many times before, and I've never seen that. And the Bible becomes so exciting. Amen? And read the whole Bible. Read from cover to cover, because it's all there in for us. All these things were written for our learning and our admonition. But by the word of God, God draws us close to himself. The word is truth, and the spirit will guide us into all truth. So there's, there's just a blessing of spending time with the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, I grew up in a Lutheran church. Uh, I went there as a child until I was 12 years old. And, well, even a little longer than that. But when I was 12, I got confirmed there. But I remember in our church, Pastor Warning, I still remember him, a little old church building that my great-great-grandfather founded in, in Youngstown, Ohio. Isn't that something? And uh, so my cousin Blake and I, we would light the candles before the service, and then we would put them out after the service. They're very, you know, you knew what to do. We had to wear these robes, or these big black robes, and then we had to sit on the front row. And uh, we'd sometimes get some sleep, you know, we were just young kids. And anyway, when the service was over, the pastor would get up, Pastor Warning, and he would say this, and this is in the scriptures. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee. The Lord be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And then he would go like this. And then the organ would play. Da -da, da -da. And then that's our cue to everybody leave the auditorium. But the Lord make his face shine upon me. And I got so used to hearing that, you know. Let me read it again. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. All I knew about that verse, I didn't know the Lord then. Uh, we had confirmation classes on Saturday in the summer from 9 to 12. Saturday, kids are out of school, right? We don't want to be in church. And we're in church learning Bible verses and whatever. That's good for a child to do, but this child wasn't grasping that. <laughs> to me, it was, what, when can I get out of here, you know? And then I heard this verse again, the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. I would like to say to you, I've discovered what that verse means. That's true. God can give you peace in your heart. The whole world can be fallen apart, but God can do something for you. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. I'm going to teach that in Sunday school. I was going to teach it last week, but we wanted to pray for our leaders. We wanted to pray for our nation, and we did. But this week, it's a great topic. 
in James chapter 3, the wisdom that's from above is first pure, peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated without hypocrisy, without all these different worldly things. It's sown in peace of them that make peace. The wisdom that's from below is earthly, sensual, devilish. Here's two wisdoms. We want the wisdom of God, not the wisdom of the world. Amen? Because the wisdom of the world can make us go the wrong way. But it's such a wonderful thing to experience this. How do you get these blessings? So many verses. Psalm 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. Amen? Whatsoever he doeth shall prosper spiritually. Spiritually. And there's all kinds of verses in the Bible that do that for us. I want to be blessed today because I want you to be blessed. I want to give a blessing to you. Um, I prayed about that this morning. All week I prepared for this. And my prayer is always when I'm preaching or teaching, God bless me that I might be a blessing. Amen? God, give me a right spirit that that spirit might work in the hearts of everybody here. Jesus said this. Well, Paul said it. In Acts chapter 20, verse 35, I have showed you all things, how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak, and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Jesus said that. It's more blessed to give than to receive. You have to have something to give. If somebody's hungry and you have food, you feed them. Amen? They're thirsty and you have water, then you give them the drink. But we're talking about spiritual things, spiritual foods, spiritual refreshing. The water that I give thee shall be a well of water springing up unto everlasting life. The Bible says, because it's real in you. David said, my cup runneth over. And if it runs over, it spills out on other people. So we want that spirit in us. And it manifests itself in so many ways. In Genesis, God said to Abraham in Genesis 12, I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. You know when you're blessed because now you're a blessing. It just pours out of you. Amen? Because the blessing cannot be contained. It's just something. The love of God, when it overwhelms you, you just want to love people. Amen? The mercy of God, when it's real in you, then you can be merciful with some other people. The grace of God, I mean, it just goes on and on and on. I have tried. I am trying today. I will continue to try to teach and preach these principles. You say, well, you brought a message like this before. I brought a bunch of messages like this. Amen? And I'll just keep preaching them because line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, God says and repeats himself over and over and over. Turn to 1 Corinthians 13, very familiar portion of Scripture. 1 Corinthians 13. This is the love chapter. And you can have all knowledge, and if you don't have charity, it profits you nothing. You can give your body to be burned, and if you don't have charity, it profits you nothing. It, it, there's nothing to it. There's just an outward form, a sacrifice. But we get into the meat of this, and look with me at verse 4. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not itself. Uh, charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth. Never. It never faileth. It works in you. Maybe it's not received by somebody else, but it works in you and it's real to you. And you're honoring the Lord by doing those things. Such a blessing. Psalm 1 again. Blessed is the man. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. The Bible says take root downward, bear fruit upward. Right? The Bible says as is the root, so is the fruit. If the root is diseased, the fruit won't work. The fruit won't be there. And if, if you're looking for apples, you're not going to get them on an orange tree. Right? Oranges do come on trees, don't they? Amen. Amen. 
but you never know sometimes. Anyway, I think it's a good thing. There's, there's two types of fruit in the Bible <clears throat> that a Christian produces. And this is why God blesses us. Amen? So we can produce fruit. Without me, you can do nothing. But with me, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. So he's at work doing his will and his, his uh, truth so he can be blessed. And we want to bless him. The first one is Proverbs 11.30. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And he that wins souls is wise. He saved you so you can save them. Amen. He gave you the gospel and you have the understanding of it and you know where you're going to spend eternity. Why did he do that? So you could tell somebody else about it. So they can know. Amen. I was talking to a young man recently, not that goes to this church, but he was sharing some harsh, hard things with me. And I would, began to use the scripture. Amen. That's why you memorize the scripture. So you can minister to somebody. And I began to tell him how great the Lord was and how God could do this and do this and do this. And I left that seed in him because the seed, the word of God, will not return void. It's going to do something. Amen? That's why we learn the Bible. That's why we're blessed when we can remember a verse. And God will guide us into that. Um, John 15, 16. Jesus said, Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you, that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. That's why he saved us. Amen? He saved us so we could save others. I don't mean uh, with our merit, but we can point them to Christ and they can be saved. And then there's another one, Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. I like this one. This is, this is great. This can take place when nobody's around. This can take place in the midst of a heartache. This can take place while you're watching TV, driving in a car, wherever it is. It's the fruit of the Spirit. Amen? You probably have this verse memorized. But this is Galatians 5.22. It's a good verse to memorize. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness. It, there's a verse in the psalm that says, Thy gentleness hath made me great. The psalmist said that about God. Gentleness, goodness, faith. He bringeth forth his fruit in his season. And that fruit is in our lives. Isn't it good to have the joy of the Lord? When David got away from the Lord and he's coming back to God, he says, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Because there's a great joy in that. Create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me. There's the spirit at work again. All of these are spiritual truths. This is not an earthly truth, an earthly blessing. This is a spiritual blessing. And we are blessed. We're blessed to live in America. Amen? We are just so blessed. And somebody said the weather, the sun shining. What a blessed day. And we can enjoy the day. We can enjoy the fellowship with each other. But we can enjoy God when it's raining, when there's no sun. Amen? Unless you're praying for rain and you're a farmer, then you can really enjoy that. But what does it mean to be blessed? Spiritual people. What fruit do you have on your tree? Just think about it. It's always good to examine ourselves. Amen? Search me, O oh God, know my heart, see if there be any wicked way in me, and then lead me. What fruit is on your tree? Spiritual fruit. There's a lot of earthly fruit, but what spiritual truth is there? Is there love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, meekness, temperance? Those are good things to look for. Um, I mentioned Numbers chapter 6, and it says, The Lord bless thee and keep thee, make his face shine upon thee. But Moses, if you remember, when he came down from the mount, getting the commandments, he spent time with the Lord. His face shone. There was, there was a difference there. Remember Cain, why is thy countenance fallen? Sin lies at the door. The, the early church, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. There's a manifestation of that. Amen. And we need to have that. And we do if we're blessed. How are we blessed? Remember, we're blessed to be a blessing. Um, Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 12. You don't have to turn there. But there, the Beatitudes are there. And it's, you know, blessed are the peacemakers, blessed are these, blessed are those. Because God blesses people like that. Isaiah 61, same thing. Matthew chapter 25. Let's look there. Matthew 25. Matthew 25. 
Here's an earthly story about a heavenly truth. Amen? And this is what God wants to show us. He wants to show us something that's going to affect our heart. Mine eye affecteth my heart. This is Matthew chapter 25. Let's begin reading in verse 35. Matthew 25, 35. For I was hungered, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee to drink? When saw we thee stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. So God says, I'll bless you, now share that blessing. God's, and we're doing that for the Lord, amen? Because when we bless other people, we bless him. That's what he said. Uh, Isaiah 58 tells you if you follow these principles, you'll be like a watered garden. You ever plant something and never water it? And it's been two weeks. Uh, we, we've got a pot of flowers out in our front, uh, by the front door. And Linda will say, did you water that? Oh, I doesn't need water. I just watered it last week, you know, and you see the, the flowers shriveling up. Of course, she doesn't let them go there. But there's good to, it's good to do that, amen? And if you share the glory of God and the goodness of God and the peace of God and the grace of God with other people, that hungry soul is going to receive that. There's people looking for that everywhere in the world, and they can't find it in the, in the life of, of the flesh. They only find it in the Lord. It's the truth of God. It's the salvation of God, the grace of God. And we can share that. Always be ready to do that. Isaiah 61, Psalm 15. I'll put these, I'll just quote these, and you can look them up if you, if you buy the CD. 49.95, uh, you can get two for $100. Yeah, don't criticize my edition there. 1 Corinthians 12, Philippians 2, Galatians, Galatians chapter 6. Bear one another's burdens. Well, why would I want to do that? And so fulfill the law of Christ. Every man bears his own burdens, and so we cast all our care upon him, for he careth for us. He bears our burdens. Why does he do that? So we can go merrily on our way. Yep, yeah, boy, my burdens are lifted. Man, boy, isn't God good to me. So we can lift somebody else's burdens. And so fulfill the law of Christ. We ought to be looking, not just physical blessings to people, but spiritual blessings. How can we be a blessing to somebody spiritually? The, the first way is to get them saved. But sometimes that's a long road. Sometimes you're just kind. Sometimes you're just merciful. Sometimes you're just a, a good friend. Amen? You don't have to preach to everybody because God will open that door, door when it's time to do that. Blessed, blessed. Bear you one another's burdens. Proverbs 25, 28. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. The enemy will come in and rob you of that joy. So make sure the Lord Jesus Christ is on your side and you're serving him. I mentioned Dan Stovall. I just wanted to, I put some correspondence down that we had and I want to read it to you. And this is, this is the fellow that's bringing the students from the college. Remember, I said there was 19 coming. There is no longer 19 coming. Because he wrote me back, and I'll, let me show you what he said. We had a dramatic change because of cancellations. I have confirmed that there will be two Americans, both Christians, three Chinese, one Christian, and four from India, all Hindu. The total now of Americans... Let me see if I got the total now of Americans is nine. Sorry. And so I, I listened to that and I thought, boy, I'd rather have 19, but God has a purpose in that. Amen. And maybe it's we'll focus more on the nine that are here than the 19. And so then he wrote me back. This is over several days. He said, we just added three Vietnamese, a husband, wife, and teenage son. And I'm thinking, God knows exactly what he's doing. 
somebody cancels, another person comes in, and, and on August 4th, the people that God wants here will be here. They'll come through that door. Uh, thank you for praying for me. God's already given me a message. I'm not completely done with it, but I know what I'm going to preach. And it's going to be a salvation message because that's what this is all about. Amen? God's going to bring somebody here that doesn't have the gospel, doesn't know the gospel, and weakened by our love and our fellowship, affect those people. Let me see if I can find my place. Anyway, I said, great. May our Lord richly bless you and your work. And then he said this, thank you. The blessings come as the angels in heaven rejoice over even one coming to faith in Jesus Christ. That's what it's all about. Amen. But there's an added earthly blessing to this too. Our students from India will bring their delicious chicken by Rani and, uh, to share. And a Chinese student will make a garlic shrimp with glass noodles. And, and, and I said, what a blessing. <laughs> Amen? I mean, so there's a blessing. It's just going to be a blessing all the way around. And remember um, Bill and Judy? They were here last year because I was on vacation, so I didn't see this group. But they asked if we could call them and they could come because they were a blessing to everybody. So they're coming too. So that's good. Amen. Bill and Judy are coming? No? One, two, three? Okay. Okay. I'll tell Bill today. I announced you coming and nobody said amen. But anyway, and you know what kind of a cook Judy is. And Judy is going to make Lynn's cherry cheesecake recipe. That's a blessing too, amen? Now, it's a blessing we're going to have food that day. It's a blessing we're going to have all those things and new people. But wouldn't it be a blessing if somebody got saved? That's, that's out of the park. You know, that's a home run. That's a touchdown all at the same time. That's a wonderful, wonderful thing, and that's what everything is all about. A spiritual home. What's a spiritual home? Well, you could describe it in so many ways, and a lot of those ways are outward. But a spiritual home is spiritually inward. There's love there. There's peace there. There's grace there. There's mercy there. Amen. They're sharing their faith. There's iron sharpening iron. All of the things, all of the verses, what they show. But what's a spiritual church? The blessings of God are there. Amen. And the blessings of God are in God's people. And so there's a purpose in the home. There's a purpose in our church. And that's to win people to the Lord. I got five verses here. And they all have one accord. The words one accord in them. One accord means agreement, harmony of minds. Philippians 2.2, 2, Fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Love the Lord. That's where our fellowship is. Acts 1.14, These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. That's why I always say, come to prayer meeting. Come and we'll all pray together. It's so important. Acts chapter 2, verse 46. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple, breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. That's the fellowship that everybody's enjoying. Don't miss these. They're so important. Acts chapter 4, verse 24. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which has made heaven and the earth and the sea, and all that is in them, all that in them is. There's praise. We sing a song, oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, our great Redeemer's praise. And so we gather. We have a hymn book. We sing choruses. We sing these songs about the Lord. We lift up our voices together. We are in one accord. Amen? We pray together. We are in one accord. We fellowship together. We're in one accord. You have Acts 8, 6. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. They heard the word. They heard the word. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit has to say. And so the Bible's being preached. And some people are tuned in. And some people aren't tuned in. I don't know who that is. Now, if you're sound asleep and you're laying on the chairs, I got a good idea. You're kind of not tuned in. Amen? But I've seen people get tired because they were ill or they were on medicine. So I'm not critical of that. 
but everything is personal. Everything. This isn't a show. We don't have to please the next person. Amen? This is between us and the Lord. And if God blesses us, then that will pour out and be on other people, and we, want, we need to have that. In Acts chapter 4, and the multitude, verse 32, and the multitude of them that believed were one heart and one soul. And look at the results of this, verse 33. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. What a blessing that must have been. Amen? Great grace, great power. This is the beginning. This is the beginning, the birth of the church. And they were in one accord and one mind, and God was putting all of that together so that that church could prosper. And it did. I mean, you read the book of Acts. Churches are being planted everywhere. Great, great thing. That's because the Spirit was right. In 1 Corinthians 14, verse 15, I will pray with the Spirit. You'll know. You'll know if your prayer... Have you ever prayed, and I've done this, have you ever prayed and you wanted to pray a good prayer? And so you're, you're thinking what people are thinking while you're praying? You know, did I say a good prayer? I mean, it's been a while, but I've, I prayed like that. You know, boy, I don't want to say something. I was at a meeting in Texas. Um, big... Houston, Texas, big church. And they had all the preachers come up. There was about 40 of us, big church. And uh, we knelt at the altar, and they said, uh, Brother Delmark, you're going to pray. This one's going to pray. That one's going to pray. And I was, I was a newer Christian at that time. And uh, I thought, oh, great. That's exactly what I thought. And I thought, what am I going to pray? And God said, it doesn't matter what you pray. Just be sincere. Amen? Why, why try and put a prayer together to impress somebody? You're trying to talk to the Lord. Amen? And so all of this is real. And when it is real, man, what fellowship there is. What a blessing there is. I will pray with the Spirit. You'll know. I will sing with the Spirit. Same verse. You will know if you're singing, thinking about, man, I can't wait to get out of here. We got, we got chicken cooking, you know? But if we're singing and the words mean something, brethren, we have met to worship and adore the Lord our God. Will you pray with all your power while I try to preach the word? Amen? And when that, those verses, why does God have those verses there? Somebody wrote that. Somebody used of God for years, wrote something like that. All the songs we say, count your many blessings, and it will surprise you what the Lord hath done. He daily loads us with benefits. We can go home today just rejoicing. Amen. Amen? Well, I don't have what they have. No, you have what God has you to have. Thou maintainest my lot. The lines are falling to me in pleasant places. Right in the corner where you are. Amen? And then there's one more. John 4, 24. God is the Spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. I will worship in the Spirit. We sing in the Spirit. We pray in the Spirit. We worship in the Spirit. It's all him, is it not? It's all for him. We were created for his pleasure. There's so many verses that talk about this. Can you imagine what a service would be like? Galatians chapter 5, verse 25. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Can you imagine? All of our hearts right with the Lord. Sometimes we ride the roller coaster. But let's, let's just stay faithful and keep these things in mind. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. That's what the psalmist said. In Revelation, our Savior is worthy of honor and glory and blessing. He's worthy of that. There are two ch churches, meant, well, more than two. There's seven churches. But the last two churches, which represent church ages, were the Philadelphian church and then the Laodicean church. The Philadelphian church, boy, God commended them. What a blessing. He gave you an open door that no man can shut. And then we come to the Laodicean church, and God shuts a door that no man can open. And so we're in the Laodicean church age, and the Bible says some people are lukewarm. I would if you were hot or cold, but not lukewarm. Time to get on fire for God. Amen? I don't know if you watch the news. Anybody here watch the news? Prophecies in the news. Prophecy. 
I mean, all the things with China, with Russia, with Israel, with Iran, all, all these things, they're all in the Bible. I mean, it's really, you say, wow, I don't think it's close. All things continue as they were since the fathers fell asleep. But that verse is not for a good person to say. Amen? That is doubting what God is doing. So anyway, just be ready. Win somebody to the Lord. Amen. That's why God saved you. He's going to take you to heaven, but he didn't just save you to take you to heaven. We are his instruments. We are his vessels now. And, and have such a spirit that that spirit is so desired in other people. And it just spills out on them. And it's a blessing. Amen. Let's bow our heads, please. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. How can I bless him? What blessing can I give him for all the blessings he's given me? The psalmist said, I will take the cup of salvation and I will praise the Lord. Fill your heart with love, joy, and peace by filling it with the Spirit of God. If you're here and you've never received Jesus Christ as your Savior, we do this every week. Please accept him. He came to this earth. God in the flesh, he died for your sins. We're all sinners. We all need a Savior. He died for you. And if you'll just ask him to be your Savior, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. He would, he would rejoice. There's joy in the presence of the angels of God in heaven over one sinner that repented. Just say a prayer silently in your heart. Lord will hear it. Lord, I'm a sinner and I, I need you as a Savior. Thank you for dying for me. Give me a home in heaven. Forgive my sin and be my Lord in Jesus' name. Father, thank you for your word. I pray, Lord, that you'd help each of us here to be filled with your spirit. I pray that we would see the grand purpose of our lives, the why God saved us and how he can use us for his glory. I pray, Lord, that it would really make a change in, in each of us and in our church. In Jesus' precious name I pray, amen. Let's